In this second video for the section, we're going to look at the other way to define computable functions, register machines. An abstract computing machine is another way to understand what kind of functions can be computed. What we do is we define a computer in a very general and abstract sense and say that a function is computable if it can be computed by one of these computer things. The kind of computer thing that we'll be using is what's called a register machine. A register machine uses a finite number of buckets, also called registers, and an unending supply of units that we can put in these registers, which you can think of as marbles or rocks or whatever you like. Each bucket can be individually identified because we'll have instructions which says, put a marble in bucket five or take a marble out of bucket three. But the marbles don't need to be distinguished. All we need to know is how many marbles are in each bucket. And a register machine program is a finite set of instructions. And the instructions are very simple. To add a marble to a bucket, and then you go on to the next instruction in the list, whatever that might be. Or to take a marble away from a bucket. But now there are two options. Either you could do that so you could take a marble away and then you go on to the next instruction. Or if the bucket was already empty, then there might be a different thing that you do in that circumstance. And that's it. There's, they're the only instructions. Now you can write the program in a flowchart as uh, the book by Richard Jeffrey, uh, Formal Logic at Scope and Its Limits does, or you could represent it in a list of instructions. So here's a program represented as a list of instructions. There are five instructions here, uh, numbered one, two, three, four, and five, and you read it like this. Instruction one, which is always where the program will start, in this case says, take a, a marble out of bucket B, and if you can do that, go on to instruction two, and if bucket B is already empty, then you go on to instruction four. Instruction two says, add a marble to bucket A, and then go on to instruction three. Instruction three says, add a marble to bucket C, and then go back to instruction one. And so we can see here, these instructions go from one to two, to three, to four, and back to one. So we're going around in a loop, except if bucket B becomes empty, in which case we go to instruction four, which now removes a marble from bucket uh, C, and if you can do that, go on to 5, add 1 to B, go back to 4, and if C is empty, then there's no instruction here, and so the program terminates. Now let's see how we could represent that uh, program, not by means of the list of instructions, but by a flowchart. So we'll represent the first instruction with a node, with an arrow going into it, or coming into, into it from nowhere, which represents start here. And then we'll label this with the label of the instruction, take a marble out of bucket B, and then it'll have two options coming out. We label the option to take if the bucket is empty with an E. The next instruction is to increment bucket A, which leads into an instruction to increment bucket C which loops back to the first instruction. And then we have two more instructions, to decrement bucket C and to increment B. And if the decrement is empty, we stop. And this is another way to represent how the program works. Notice that in this diagram, none of these nodes have actually got the numbers, one, two, three, four, or five, because the way they're connected to each other is now just done by the arrows. So let's have a look at what this program does when we start with two marbles in bucket A and three marbles in bucket B and nothing in C. Starting off at instruction one, we take a marble out of bucket B, go to instruction two when we put a marble in bucket A. And we go to instruction three where we put a marble in bucket C. Then we go back to the beginning and do the same thing. Marble out of bucket B, in bucket A and in bucket C and go back to the beginning where we take a marble out of bucket B and put one in bucket A and in bucket C. 
And we go back to instruction one again, but now there's nothing in bucket B to take out. So we go to instruction four. Here we take a marble out of bucket C if we can. Here we can. We put one in bucket B and we go back out of C into B. Out of C into B as many times as we can until bucket C is empty. Until we can't do that anymore and then we stop. The register machine program terminates and we're done. We started off with two marbles in bucket A and three in bucket B, and we ended up with five in bucket A and still three in bucket B. It's not too hard to see what happens. In general, if we have some marbles in bucket A and some marbles in bucket B, when this finishes, we'll start with the, the sum of the amount that were in A and B in A, and the amount that we started off with in B stays in B. Of course, it's not necessarily the same marbles. They'll be different marbles. The marbles have all moved around a fair bit. But as we said before, we don't care about what the individual marbles are doing. All we care about is how many there are in each register. So one way to represent what this, in, what this program does is it takes what was in bucket A and in bucket B and puts that amount in bucket A and it takes what was in bucket B and leaves that in bucket B. This is a kind of non-destructive adder where B is added to A, but we keep the information about what the B was that was added to A. So there's a sense in which this register machine computes addition. Here's the general sense of how it is that a register machine might compute a function or a partial function. Register machine computes the partial function from n inputs to an output. Whenever the register machine starts with, you know, x1 marbles in bucket 1, x2 marbles in bucket 2, x3 marbles in 3, and so on, and if there's other registers in the machine, no marbles in those, then if the per program terminates, the result of the computation, f of x1 up to xn, is the number of marbles that are in bucket 1. And we say that if the program doesn't terminate, then f applied to those in inputs is undefined. So the register machine that we had computes addition because if you put n marbles in the first register and m marbles in the second register, then n plus m is the number of marbles that return are returned in register 1. So that's what we've got represented on this slide. This program computes the addition function, lambda x, lambda y, x plus y, because it's, if it starts off with n marbles in register A and uh, register B has m marbles, then at the end, A contains n plus m. Now we can use those instructions, gram, as part of a larger program to compute multiplication by using repeated addition. So let's start off with those instructions, except now we'll move them around so that instead of adding A and B and putting the result in A, we'll add B and C and put the result in C. And as before, B is the register that is preserved. So this is the little program that we had before. It's got another register that it's using. Let's call that register D. And we're going to use this inside our larger program which will multiply the contents of register A by the contents of register B. And this is a really easy thing to do. We just take register A and count it down. And every time we can count it down, we add B to C and keep going until you can't anymore and then you stop. Now the result of all of this repeated addition is sitting in register C here. That's where we kept on adding B to C and kept on adding B as many times as um, A lets us. And so to meet the definition of computing the function of multiplication, we want to shove the result back from register C into register A. And we do that by counting register C down as many times as we can and adding a unit back to register A, which after all is empty when we get out at this stop. So when that all finishes, the result of the computation is in register A, the first register of the program, which is where we want it to be. This whole program computes multiplication by going through this central process of addition as many times as there are marbles in register A. So it does addition of B a units of time. 
goes through that loop however many marbles are in register A. And once register A is counted down, it finishes that central loop and then it puts the result that was in register C in register A by this loop and then finishes when C is empty and all of those units are back in register A. So register machines are quite simple. They just have two different kinds of instructions, increment a register and decrement a register. And the decrement is the only place where we have any choice. We do something if the register is non-empty and we can do the decrement, and we do something else if the register is empty already and we can't do the decrement. Turns out you can compute lots of things using register machines. A task for us to do in class will be to design a register machine that given an input of two numbers, returns the smaller of those two numbers as its output. That'll give you a, a sense of how to design register machines and what they're capable of. In next week, we will show that these two very different ways of defining functions by way of register machines on the one hand, and that original definition of recursive functions in terms of the successor function, the zero function, the ID functions, and composition, primitive recursion, and minimization, that these two different ways of defining things come to define the same class of functions. And these are what we call the recursive functions. But that's our topic for next week. So here's what we've covered in these two videos for this week. We've covered register machines. So we've got rocks or marbles and buckets and the instructions. And termination being when the, the program has actually finished and calculated a result and how a register machine computes a function. And then there's the notion of recursive functions. We need to know the basic functions, the constructors, how to read those definitions, and how to define simple functions by means of primitive recursion, composition, and minimization.